It's the second time I've been at the War Literature and the Arts Conference, and I think it's essential for a number of reasons, but primarily because it brings our military veterans, our active duty troops, and our civilian historians, educators, and artists together. And we talk about any number of things, including our common bonds and our common interests. And I think it's a great intellectual exchange. I really light up when I see, for example, the cadets in the room, and they're hearing from some of our nation's greatest historians and novelists and poets. And they're talking about shared values. They're also talking, many of these novelists being combat veterans from other wars, they're talking about the reality of service, the importance of service, but also the sacrifice of it. And so I think for the military academies, uh, and particularly for the Air Force Academy, I think it's vital to talk to people that are on the other side of that experience. I think the Air Force Academy in particular, the service academies, it's, it demands so many technical skills. It's natural that you're more towards science and engineering and of course the pilot corps. I understand that the curriculum may be largely STEM-based, but I will say the an aviator and a military leader is an incomplete leader if the humanities are not a part of their lived experience. Now that could be their classroom experience, that could be leadership classes, and if you just look, for example, at your own honor code, that is a core issue. That is about ethics. If you do not have ethics, you do not have character, you do not deserve to be an officer. And I think then what you're saying, and those aren't my words, that's the Academy's own view. And so when they take a, a pledge, for example, to the Constitution, that is a document of, of the humanities, that is a historical document. That's what my federal agency, the National Endowment for Humanities, what my colleagues and I are focused on preserving and also educating people about.